This is me looting a village about to be hunted by an entire server. I have one hour to stack up before the server opens to the public and everyone starts joining. My only goal is to survive for 24 hours whilst their goal is to kill me. I did this once before and lasted almost 12 hours, but this time I am not going down so easily. And on top of that, I added a twist to make things more interesting. Everyone looks like me, has the same name tag, and all the armor and tools you have look like iron to everyone else. I'm about to attempt my hardest challenge yet for the second time. The first hour is crucial, because if everything goes according to plan, I can get so far ahead that nobody will ever be able to catch up to me. I even have access to a live world map that shows all the structures, biomes, and players on the server. But even still, in order to pull it off, I needed some crazy luck. Step 1. Get lots of food and some iron. Step 2. Go to the only woodland mansion on the map and acquire a totem of the undying. On your way to completing step 2, get incredibly lucky and find the rarest room in the woodland mansion that provides an entire diamond block. Step 3. Get lapis and enchant all your gear. Step 4. Enter the nether. Step 5. Loot a bastion and use all the gold you gathered to trade with piglins. If you're lucky, they will give you lots of pearls. Step 6. Visit a nether fortress for some blaze rods. Step 7. Exit the nether and head for the stronghold. Step 8. Enter the stronghold and find the portal room. Step 9. Fill in the portal and enter the... So close. The portal is filled, but the one hour is over, so I have to open the server before I go in. This part is very important. If I manage to enter the end before anyone tracks my location, I have the entire end for myself. If they do track me before I go in, they will have the location of a filled end portal and will be able to enter the end without any effort. One person managed to lock in my location before I entered the end. This meant that I had to speed up my process. Killing the dragon is easy, but if I want to reach an end city without being interrupted, I need to do it before they get here. The dragon fell to my axe really fast, and turns out that the guy who locked in my location accidentally clicked the compass and started tracking a different spot. So there was no way anyone would get to me anytime soon. I used this opportunity to get some extra pearls and blocks, because if I wanted to loot some end cities, I would need it. Hour 3 was no different than Hour 2. Nobody reached the end, so I continued looting end cities as long as I could. However, if I was getting so much free time to stack up, so were the other players. I needed to make sure that nobody could catch up to my level of weapons and armor, so I called in some backup to make sure that didn't happen. Say hi to Yellow Wool and Pangy, two friends that have yet to betray me. Calling in for help in this event is always unpredictable, because no matter how much you trust someone, they might still try to kill you. But I had no other choice if I wanted to survive for another 21 hours. More end cities, more loot, but still no players in sight. That has been my life for the last two hours, and it was looking like this next one wouldn't be so different. The loot I have found so far was pretty much the best it was gonna get. The only way I could upgrade it was through trading or regular enchanting. This meant that I now had to find an end gateway and go back to the overworld, but I was thousands of blocks out in the end, and there was no gateway in sight. After around 40 minutes of searching, I finally found one. But did I really need to go through it at once? Even if I did, I would still have to enter the end portal at the center of the main island, which would lead me back to my bed, or in this case, back to spawn. From then, I would have people on my tail at all times. Why would I do that now when I could avoid doing it for possibly another hour if I simply waited at the end gateway? That's exactly what I did for the next 30 minutes. Absolutely nothing. Until I got bored and decided to finally go in. The actual reason why I went in was because one of my allies, Hangi, was already in the end. And with his help, we could kill anyone who stood between me and the end portal at the center of the main island. Okay. Please don't die, Vesper. I had such good armor that nobody was doing damage to me. This gave me a huge confidence boost, but not for long. Suddenly, I found myself in an extremely vulnerable position, and this whole challenge was in jeopardy. There's so many people. Dude, don't I can't, try to get me. I can't. He's going. They become you. Good, 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 good. 
I'm just running away. I'm just running away like- Dude, I can't reload! I somehow managed to squeeze myself out of this embarrassing incident and was too scared to continue the fight. So I entered the portal and took a break while staring at the credits. For the first 15 minutes of hour 6, I simply stared at the end credits. Exiting the screen would send me back to spawn, which meant that people could be waiting for me. I needed to make sure I was ready for whatever, or this could be the end of the road. Do you guys know if spawn is safe? No Check idea, bro. I'm checking right now. I'm checking right now. Oh, I'm fine. I'm safe. I'm safe. Nobody's attacking me either. Oh, they just checked. Bro, I'm just looking at this guy dying. <laughs> oh, everyone is here now. Hold up. I am spawn dropping everyone right now. <laughs> Wait, booster, everyone you kill just respawns here and dies in lava. <laughs> <laughs> That's strategy. That's the strategy. After escaping the spawn, where I got jumped by people who had the most annoying arrows in the game, I continued running, but people started catching up, so I had to fight. That's right. so hard, yellow. <laughs> Kill the guy. Let's go. Oh, he has strength. Hold up. Oh yes. There we go. All of these fights were starting to wear out my armor, and if I didn't do anything about it now, it would soon start breaking. So I hashed up a plan. My plan was to travel from village to village and try to get a mending trade. If I see any players approach, I eliminate them as fast as I can and ensure that they don't set their spawn. Once the coast is clear, I return to trading with villagers. Time went by as I continued to travel and kill players, but mending was still not in my reach. I knew that if I continued this process, my my armor would break before I could get the enchantment, so I asked my dear friend Yellow Wolf for help. Is he? You? You yeah, it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me. Did the thing. Yeah. Here is there's four mending boots. Oh my god. Uh, and that's the mending guy right there. I got mending on all of my armor and important tools, but there was no time to celebrate as a challenger approached the village. Dude, 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 someone came for your portal. Someone came for your portal. We are killing him right I now. I can't, I, can't, I can't get killed, bro. I'll, 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 I'll thank you, you gonna get him? Oh, wow. Is he strength? He's running away, though. That one over there? Yeah. He's on fire now. He's, he's on two and a half. It's fine. I'll get the kill. I'll get the kill. He's down here. Is he full health again? He's full health. He's full health. Oh, he's not full health anymore. Yeah, he's half health. He's half freaking health from that, dude. Is this him? Wait, no, that's me, that's me, that's me. Oh, that's you. He's half hard, he's half hard, he's half hard. Let's go. There we go. After that intense encounter, I decided to head into the nether and straight up strip mine for netherite. At first, I thought it would get boring really fast, as coming across ancient debris is really rare, but today was truly my lucky day. With a full set of maxed out netherite and a couple of allies on my team, I was unstoppable. At least that's what I thought, until I saw an enderman farm in the end dimension on my map. A farm that produces heaps of ender pearls and experience would cause two main issues. Number one, they would have enough experience to do level 30 enchanting. Number two, they would have way more pearls than me, which would make it impossible to escape them. I had to burn down this farm, or I would lose this challenge. Luckily, Pengi already had coordinates to a stronghold that had a completed end portal, and getting there was super easy. Nobody was currently inside the end dimension, so I jumped straight in. The farm is built around 30 blocks out, so there's a one block wide bridge connecting it to the main island. This was extremely dangerous since anyone could easily punch me into the void, but I was willing to take that risk and instantly started to destroy the farm. Let me set it on fire real quick. We might just rebuild it real fast, but yeah, we're gonna definitely break this. Oh, there's a guy here. He just fell through. There he goes. Their farm and enchanting station were totally destroyed, and all that was left to do was eliminate the players that were standing between me and the end portal. While fighting, a new ally joined our team, 5up, a professional Among Us player with extraordinary deception skills. He was the perfect candidate to infiltrate the enemy's ranks and acquire some inside information. Whilst that was happening, I decided to go back to the overworld and resume my village strategy in order to get some extra enchantments. I had plenty of options to go for, but the one I really wanted to get was Riptide 3. When combined with a trident, this enchantment would allow me to literally dash in water, and since elytras are disabled, this is the fastest traveling method. I could literally escape any situation in a blink of an eye, and nobody could do anything about it. While looking for the specific enchantment, I came across another useful one. <gasps> Feather Falling 4! I just got- Yo, do you have one emerald? Oh, Riptide 3! No, I need more! I 
got Riptide 3, boys. With the enchantment finally in my hands, all I needed now was an actual trident. The only way to get that is to kill a drowned holding a trident. I knew this would be a tedious process because the mob is pretty rare in itself and the trident drop rate is around 1 in 10. However, I was still determined to get one because it would give me a huge advantage. But before I started looking for this item, I had to take care of some threats coming my way. If there's just a cave to I got just strength, like strength. Really He's a flame bow. Yeah, this guy's full. Uh, there's a fully stacked guy on me right now. He's gonna break his shield, I think. And like water. Yeah, the water cycle. Do you have it? He's eating a god apple? Nah, bro. What are you doing, bro? There. That should be enough for your full iron. I don't know where I got 40 iron from. Do you need help? Nah, I'm good. So you don't want me to come to you? Actually, wait, yeah, come to me. We can kill these guys. I'm on my way. Is he gonna prolong me? He has a sharp axe with strength. I will be wearing a totem of the undying in my offhand, by the way. I'll have a crossbow in my offhand. Yo, what's up, Booster? Oh, that's you? Or that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got buff. I broke his boat. I have a Death Strider, so I'll, I'll kill him here. Kill him, kill him, I killed him, killed him, killed him, killed him. After that quick cleanup, the search for the Fork of the Poseidon began. The entire hour 12 was spent on traveling from ocean to ocean with no trident yet in sight. At some point, I got so bored that I decided to call Dev just to troll him a little. Dev, um, you're dumb. What? What is happening? Are you streaming? Uh, I'm doing the 24 hour thing, I'm going crazy. Tell him. <laughs> You're dying, bro. Oh my god, this round. I hope you get better. Yeah, I hope you still lose, though. After some more trolling, hour 13 started, and I was on my own once again. Around another 30 minutes later, I finally got a trident. <gasps> yes! This was great news, but it also uh, meant that I needed to go back to the village strategy in order to get Unbreaking 3 and Mending Enchantments. After that, it was smooth sailing. <gasps> Oh yes, I'm taking that. I don't even care that I used up basically all my emeralds. I have full armor set now. The smooth sailing didn't last for long, and after killing loads of understacked players, a worthy challenger approached. So there's a guy over here. Okay. Come on. Well, he's dying now. This guy's so stacked, Jesus. He's <laughs> strength, dude. Let's go! Oh my god, this guy was stacked. Jesus. This encounter genuinely made my heart pound and it opened my eyes. I wasn't as unkillable as I thought and it was at this moment that I knew I had to make a real plan. First, I needed to eliminate the Enderman farm that was functional again. Their farm sucks garbage, but they do have infinite pearls now. After that was taken care of, I started hunting down the most stacked teams and destroying their bases. They have a village. Oh, I see them. They have brought four netherite, bro. Once all the threats were dealt with, I traveled to the very corner of the border on top of the nether roof and literally went AFK while traveling 5,000 blocks using a flying machine. Traveling with a flying machine on top of the nether roof was actually just a test run. I wanted to see how the server would handle the contraption and if I would glitch off or lag out while using it, causing me to fall out of the boat. That didn't happen and my actual plan was ready. I had two alternatives, travel to a corner of the border in the overworld or in the end, then build all the way up to the limit and use my flying machine the same way I used it in the nether. If I did this in the end, people would have way more issues catching up to my location since traversing the end 
island landscape is hard when you don't have access to elytras. However, I would also risk falling in the void. If I did this same plan in the overworld, I would not risk the void, but people would have no trouble finding my location. The question was, would they realize what I'm doing? The void seemed too deadly of an option, so I chose to do this in the overworld. And even though people caught up to my location, I was still out of their view distance, so it would take them some time to figure out what I was up to. After 90 minutes of traveling with the flying machine, nobody had figured out my plan, until I accidentally dropped a piston- OH THERE'S MY PISTON! And they realized they'd been bamboozled. Plant Slime was now in shambles, so I had to commence Plan Connect 4. This plan required me to build 4 nether portals in each corner of the overworld, preferably at build limit. Once that was done, I would connect these portals to 4 new ones on top of the nether roof. If I was ever getting chased, no matter which dimension, I could use these portals as quick escape routes. This plan was sadly never completed, as I was constantly getting distracted. Plant Slime and Connect 4 were now both out the window, so I had only one strategy left. Plan kill. This plan involved resuming to hunt down the most stacked teams and destroying their bases. Oh my goodness, Pisper. That guy's low. He's on one. Oh, he has strength. Pisper. Oh my. Pisper. Crawling away now? Oh, he's damaged. Getting out. Dude, if he has gear, keep a helmet from him. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, what? Wow. Oh, right here. <laughs> crit him, crit him, crit him, crit him. Wait, is that you? I'm kind of Let's go! Plan kill was only temporary, because once all the stacked players were dealt with, all I had left to do was go back to the good old flying machine. However, this flying session didn't go so smoothly, because I somehow managed to accidentally click shift, which made me exit the boat and fall all the way down. Oh my god, my boat, my boat, my boat. Do I have another boat? I do. Oh no, I fell. I thought that the flying machine continued on without me, so I ran for a bit and built straight up, expecting it to fly into my tower. However, when a flying machine isn't loaded in, it is frozen, so it was actually stuck in an unloaded chunk and I couldn't do anything about it. So I went back to the overworld to chill for a bit. That didn't last very long because I got bored and decided to go back to the nether roof to hunt down two stacked players. One of them was completely undergeared and died pretty much instantly, but the other one was the complete complete opposite. Yeah, there he is, boys. Dude, I almost died, bro. What the? That guy stacks. Oh my god. My totem was finally bought, and my pulse was through the roof. After surviving for this long, I was not about to throw it all away. I purled, and I purled, until I couldn't see him anymore. I went back to the overworld, and used my trident to start heading towards the stronghold. What mattered now was survival, and the only way to secure that was to get as much distance between me and everyone else as humanly possible. This is me, running across the end islands, being chased by an entire server. My only goal is to survive this final hour, and their goal is to kill me. In order to win, I have developed a super simple plan. Find an end gateway far out in the end islands. Camp there for as long as I can, and if someone reaches my location, I might try to fight, but I will not take any unnecessary risks. And if I am in trouble, I will go through the gateway, sprint towards the end portal, and go back to the overworld. As time was running out, I was observing the world map and nobody was even close to me. So with 10 minutes left on the clock, I decided to go through the gateway and back to spawn. The end island is looking unpopulated. Let's go through. Go back to spawn. I don't know where I spawn actually. Oh my god. Oh, there's so many people here. Let's build up. There's so many people here. Okay, there we go. I can't go to the nether anymore. This all obsidian is used up. Oh my god. Look at all those ants under me, dude. Let's go. Let's snipe some people. Oh, what a snipe. Let's go! Where are you guys? 
Let's go! Defend it! Actually, a guy with an axe came here. <gasps> oh, wait, hold up. People are actually doing damage. Oh my god. Yo, what's up, boys? Oh, what's up, boys? Oh, what is happening right now? <laughs> what is happening right now? Do I need to drink my strength? To drink my speed? I need to drink my fire prod? I need to drink my regen. Let's go in. Let's chase this guy. This is so cursed. Just hunting myself, dude. Three minutes, 43 seconds. It was this. Oh, there's... Oh, okay. That guy stacked. That guy stacked. There's the guy with speed. No. No, I need... I just need to... Oh, my God. There's so many people. <laughs> Yo, fight him in the... Underwater, maybe? Oh, there's the timer. I won. This event didn't lag one bit, and it's all thanks to dedicated MC and their stable servers. Also, big thanks to Fred for setting up this entire event. I couldn't have made this happen without him.